So first we have this relationship, and then you have you know have strength and the joy and the love of God, and then when you read the Bible, the Bible, the Word of God will come alive to you, and when you pray, you will experience His peace and His love and His. The relationship with God will be very different, and when you minister, your life will be changed too. Now, here I have a teaching called Joyful Victory. You go online on YouTube, you look for Pastor Yip, Y-I-P, Y-I-P, Pastor Yip. You can see this teaching. Now, in the past, I, sh I call it Sure Victory, but now I change it to Joyful Victory, so you can look for it, Sure Victory. And this morning, I'm going to talk about first about overcoming sin. Now many people say it's so hard to overcome sins. It's so hard to overcome lust or anger or frustration or unforgiveness. For some people it's very hard. But the first thing I want to say is we need the presence of God in order to be able to overcome sin. Psalm 90 verse 14, please read to me with me. Satisfy us in the morning with your unfailing love that we may sing for joy and be glad all our days. You know, when the Lord comes to us, He blesses us with His unfailing love. His love will never fail. His love is suffi sufficient for us in all situations. In all situations, in the most difficult situation, His love is sufficient for us. And then what's the result? You can sing for joy and be glad all our days. Do you want to live a happy life or a depressed life? Do you want depression or you want joy? You know, many people live a life under pressure. But if you have a strong presence of God and live in His love, then all the days of your life you can enjoy Him and your life become pleasure. And also, God will bless you in all the ways. You know, God has blessed me in many ways. Here's a picture of my, me and my wife. And here, you know, God has blessed me everything. She's very loving and very good and very, you know, we work together very well in our ministry. And everything I do, I find God's blessing. And God wants to bless you like that. If you let Him be the Lord, He will bless you. Now, this morning, I will talk about how to overcome sins first. Now, first, the concept, no one can escape God's eyes. Now, many Christians think, well, I'll sin now and then I'll ask Him to forgive me later. Or, when I get old, I will follow God. Now, let me stay in the world. People think like that. But here it says, Revelation 2.23. When you see Bible verses, you can read with me. I am He who searches hearts and minds. And I will repay each of you according to your deeds. You know, God searches our heart. He knows your heart. He knows what's inside your heart. And when you, in your heart, you decide the world, He knows it. When you decide the world, you won't get Him. But if you decide the Lord, He knows you. God has confirmed that to me so many times. People, they came to me and said, God spoke to them and tell them to follow me. That God will guide them to follow me and to find my videos. And also, that I have one person in Hong Kong, I pray for her to drive all demons from her and her life was greatly changed and then he, he be, uh, began to hear more from God. And then she was also taken up to heaven many times. And one time she went to heaven and saw her book of record of her rewards, that God rewards her and then it's recorded. And then she was very curious because I'm one person that has helped her spiritually. And she said, can I see Pastor Yip's book of record of reward? And then Jesus sent an angel to get my book. And then when she saw it, it, it is thick and it's covered with gold. And on top it says, my beloved son and then my name. You know, when I hear that, I really, I'm really humble. You know, I want to tell you, it's not me. God chose me when I was weak. I have nothing to boast of. I, you know, really all my changes now is not from me. It's from God's action. And I respond to Him. And I say, God, you're so good. In 1998, when I had been a pastor for 15 years, and an evangelist from South America came to Hong Kong and he laid hand on me and I experienced a great power entering me like electricity and a great love entered me 
And I was so touched, I cried for a long time. And then I found that, you know, I said, I didn't know I can experience God like that. And so I really hunger for God every day. I spend a long time praying. And also, I noticed one day I cried to Jesus, Lord Jesus, immediately, power went through me. And later, I experienced the joy of the Lord. And every time I think of Jesus, His joy <laughs> will just keep flowing out. And I said, this is really great to have this intimate relationship with God. It is enjoyable and it's strengthening. And I have so much strength, so much motivation. You know, I'm already 65 years old. But God still gives me strength and health. And I can go to different places and God provide for me. So I can go to different countries and bless them for free. It's God's blessing. And I want to say God wants to use you like that. Now after that experience, I really dedicated my life to God. And I said, if that evangelist can pray for people and people can experience the love of God, I want to be like him too. I want to have that close relationship with him too. And then after that, my life has never been the same and the ministry has gone up and up. Now, not all of you are called to be pastor, but all of you are called to be witnesses. If you live the life of Jesus, you talk about Jesus a lot, you tell people about Jesus, and your life will show. There's one person in Hong Kong, she has a shop selling clothes, but she talked to her, she, her customers all the time about Jesus. And yesterday, one of her customers called me because this Christian recommended some of my videos, and she watched it, and then she reach me and then I responded to her and then now she's in my church in Hong Kong now and we pray for her and counsel her she felt the peace of God you know it's so good when you have the presence of God and God will use you greatly do you want to live a life like, like that yeah. you know so since that time I really dedicate my life to God and do not let any sin bomb, uh, hinder me and dedicate my life to God and God is pleased with that and so when I heard that, the book of record of reward, I say, I'm not worthy of it. It's a gift of God. I don't want to boast. I just want to boast of God. It's Him. And He can do the same thing for you. He can do great things for you. So He searches your heart. Is your heart now is about God? Or is it about yourself? Do you hunger just, I want to be great? Or you say, Lord, you be great. If you hunger for God, God knows your heart. So if we let sin stay in our heart, He knows it. And then, we want to know also sins bring punishment. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 8. Nor let us commit sexual immorality, as some of them did. And in one day, 23,000 fell. Nor let us tempt Christ, as some of them also tempted and were destroyed by serpents. Do you want to be destroyed? No. You know, among Chinese, do you know this man called Bruce Lee? <laughs> Bruce Lee, so good in Kung Fu. In his last movie, it's called The Game of Death. And, you know, the title means, you know, he really can think of death like a game, but he died in the middle of the movie. He died. When I saw that in Hong Kong and the news, I was shocked, I was surprised. I just saw him on the news, uh, in a TV a few days ago. But he thought, you know, he's powerful, he's strong. And I know one Christian, one time I came across a Christian. He said that he was a friend of Bruce Lee. And he saw Bruce Lee one time, and because when they were young, they saw each other and then they played Kung Fu. And then when he saw Bruce Lee, Bruce Lee said, let's try play Kung Fu and then try to kick him. And Bruce Lee kicked him and he flew away, 10 feet away. And then, and then this friend said, you know, Jesus is good. He want to tell Bruce Lee about Jesus. And Bruce Lee said, you know, I don't need Jesus. But he never knew that. He thought he was great, but no one can be great in front of God. So it's very important to know that when we sin, when we tempt God, can we stand? We can never. So don't ever think that 
Some people think I have less in me. I watch uh, uh, the pornography on TV or on uh, uh, the cell phone or you know uh, participate in sin and it will be okay. It's not okay. Now in the New Testament time, also God bring punishment in Acts chapter 5 verse 3. Let's read. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and keep back part of the price of the land for yourself? You have not lied to men, but to God. Then Ananias, hearing these words, fell down and breathed his last. So great fear came upon all those who heard these things. So even now, if we tell lies, God can do the same thing to us. But God doesn't do it now because of His grace that He gives us time. If He, if he continues to do what He did there, none of us will stand in front of God. So we need to realize that since punishment is very, you know, it can be very severe, and also God can, you know, discipline us. In Hebrews 12, 10, it talks about God disciplining us. So we, we should fear God, at the same time, love God. We honor God, we know that none of us can stand in front of God. So here I talk about some other consequence of sin. When we know the consequence of sin, then we say, yes, I don't want any sin, I don't want any anger, I don't want any negative things in my heart. Ephesians 4.26 In your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. And do not give the devil a foothold. So anytime we sin, we give the devil a foothold. I have driven out demons from many people. Almost every week there are people who came to me to ask for help. And then, some people, we drove out demons, but they continue to sin. What happened is the demons won't go away. You know, because demons, sins will give demons a foothold. So we don't want to sin because it will destroy our life. Let's say it together, sins will destroy our life. And then also sins will make things worse. John chapter 5 verse 14. See, you are well again. Stop sinning or something worse may happen to you. That is the man who was sick for 38 years and could not walk. And then Jesus healed him. And then he said, don't sin anymore, lest the worst thing will happen to you. Do you want worst thing happen to you? So we have to realize that sinning can, you know, bring terrible things to us. Now, I'm not just trying to tell you the negative things. I will tell you the positive reason why we want, don't want to sin. But we, I first want to tell you that it's terrible to sin. Now, some people might think, well, sinning is stealing someone, hitting someone, uh, uh, you know, committing serious sins like adultery. But let me tell you, not praying is sin. Not praying is sin. Not having a close relationship with God is sin. Frustration is sin. Depression is sin. All these unhandled negative feelings are sins. We all, in some way, are affected by negative feelings, emotions. And we need to learn to con take care of this. Not to control, but to take care of this so that we're not controlled by sin. So we need to realize that Sins are very terrible because sins give devil a foothold and the devil can do worse things. Now for this man, what could be some worse thing? His sickness could get worse. One time on a subway train in Hong Kong, I met someone. God let me meet the person. I was reading a Bible and he, he was looking at my Bible. And I, I, you know, sometimes I use that as a way of witnessing to people. And then I said to him, this is a Bible. And he said, I'm a Christian too. And then he told me a story. He said, when I was young, I had this sickness. My back is twisted. And also when I saw him at that time, his back was twisted. And then I had great pain. But then Billy Graham came to the city. You know, in the past, Billy Graham did healing meetings and evangelistic meetings. But now, I mean, now he, he's retired, but for many years, he just did evangelistic meeting. He did not do the healing part, maybe because of the pressure of some churches. Maybe, I don't know what the, what the reason is. And then this man also went, and then they gave handkerchiefs to Billy Graham, and then Billy Graham prayed over the handkerchiefs, and then 
give it back to the people. And he put it on his body when he was at home. And his back was healed. And he felt very good. But a few days later, a monk, a Buddhist monk came to his home and told him to have idols. And he did. His family member did. And then his sickness came back. So worse things happened to him. Do you want worse things happen to you? No. We're afraid. So you say, Lord, yes, I need to honor you and fear you and know that sins are terrible. Say it together. Sins are terrible. Now, Jesus will forgive us. But there is still a consequence of sin. There's always a consequence of sin. We cannot escape the consequence. David, does David love God? Does God like him? Yes, but after his sin, he was forgiven when he repented. But did, could he escape the punishment? No, he was punished. Swords would not leave his family. So we realize that sins are terrible. You know, now I really face my sins and handle my sins anytime it appears because I don't want anything to take away the blessings I'm having now. Now, if you hear one day, Pastor Yim has committed serious sin and is not in ministry anymore, will you feel sad about that? You would. So I want to keep my life clean, holy, have a good relationship with God. You know, your life too. Your life is the best thing you can have in this world, right? You only keep your life. Can you keep your money? No, you can only keep your life. But if you ruin your life, if you just dump your life into the ocean, you don't have it anymore. So realize that sins are terrible. Now, excuses people give for sinning. People say, why? Because many people say, oh, I, don't, I don't know that sin to worry. <laughs> people say, it's natural to worry. Yes, it's natural. <laughs> but when we know that we're worrying, do we continue worrying? Worry is the lack of faith. Lack of faith is also sin. Let me tell you, sin means when we fall short of the glory of God. The saints in heaven, the Christians in heaven, do they worry? Do they, are they depressed? No, they're joyful and peaceful and full of love all the time. When we are not like them, then we, are, we fall short of the glory of God. So anytime you notice you're worried, you know it's a sin, and then we want to handle it. You think about the love of God, the blessings of God, and then you pray to God, and you can overcome worry. So many people didn't notice they are sinning. And an excuse, well, everyone is doing the same thing. Everyone came to church late, so I came to the church late, it's okay. But people don't give the time. I don't give the time, it's okay. You know, people yell at each other, husband and wife yell at each other, even Christians. And some people say, I know the deacons are doing that same thing too. They, you know, that deacon is fighting against his wife. Oh, so I do it, it's not so bad. Can we say someone else is doing it so I can do it? No, so we know it's serious. And then some people say, nobody is perfect. I can't be perfect. Let me tell you, we cannot be perfect. But what we can do, I'm going to tell you today, as soon as the sin appears, immediately take care of that. We can never be perfect, but we can handle the sins as much as we can. As soon as it's, it comes up, have you seen a game that in some places that, that you might see a game, that there are holes and there are heads of animals coming up, and then as soon as you see the animal come up, you hit it. <laughs> so what I encourage you to do, as soon as the sin come up, I don't want it, I don't want it. <laughs> So nobody is perfect. We are not perfect. But as soon as sins appear, immediately I want to take care of it. And then some people might say, those people mistreat me first. It's natural for me to be to be uh, angry, to be mean to them. That is very it's very common. Many people say, my husband treat me like that. I have to be angry with him. I have to yell at him. Now let me ask you: If someone else said this is someone else. He sins, does it mean I have to sin also? No. His sin is his problem. I want to pray for him and have compassion on him. But he sins doesn't mean I have to sin also. It is his problem. That we all treasure our life. I treasure my life. 
I really treasure my life because, you know, I'm 65, many people retire already. But I don't want to retire. 70, I only have four and a half years before 70. That's too soon. 80, 70, 80, 90, but that's too soon. If God can give me more years, I want to serve God more. I want to tell more people about the teachings that God has given me. It's so wonderful. So what I want to say is, your life is precious. Say to the one next to you, your life is precious. Treasure your life. Someone else said, don't follow them. Okay, now falling short of the glory of God is sin. It can be worry, depression, anger, complaint, faint-heartedness, laziness, wasting our life, all of these are sins. And any sin is destructive. Any sin is destructive. Galatians 6, 8. Whoever sows to please the first from the first will reap destruction. Any sin will reap destruction. I'll explain in a moment. And Romans 8, 7. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. That the carnal mind, the mind that loves the world, is an enmity against God. It's become God's enemy. Any kind of sin, when you watch pornography, when you are angry with someone, you are fighting against God. And all the sins will affect our life. James 2.10 for whoever keeps the whole law and yet stumbles at just one point is guilty of breaking all of it. Now you might say, why? I'm just sad. How would it affect me? Let me tell you. When you are sad, it will make it hard for you to worship, right? It is hard for you to relate to people. Hard for you to greet people and hard for you to do evangelism. So when you're sad, it will affect your relationship with God, your relationship with people, and it will affect your inner life, and it will affect the whole thing. Any sin, if you watch pornography on TV, or on uh, uh, your cell phone, or, or on the computer, it will ruin your whole life. Or when you have problem with your family, it will affect your whole life. So realize that any one sin, it will destroy your life. Can you just take some poison? A little poison. Just a little poison. Is that okay? A little, little, very little. You cannot. Sin is like poison. And then the Bible tells us, 1 Timothy 6.14, to keep this command without spot or blame until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now some people say, how can I be perfect? I tell you, we cannot be perfect like God. But we can pursue righteousness and also that the Bible tells us don't give the devil a foothold now sin affects our relationship with others with ourselves and with God every sin every single sin for instance when you have problem with your husband and wife it will affect your relationship with other people when you see other people you won't be happy you won't be able to care about people and then inside you, if you have problems at home, inside you, you don't have much peace. And also with God, there is also a problem. Any kind of sin would have all this effect. And the first thing we want to know is when we are truly repentant, God forgives us. The first key to overcome sin is forgiveness by Jesus Christ. 1 John 1, 9, let's read. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Now many people came to me and say, Oh, Pastor, I have sinned again. And they feel so bad, they said, That doesn't like me because I've sinned so many times. But I tell them, When God hears that you are sinned, and then you come to Him and say, I'm so terrible, God will say, I've seen it so, in so many people, everyone I see sins. But when you come to me in re repentance, I'm very happy. Now for the forgiveness of God, I use an illustration. There is no light switch. Now if there is a light switch here, if I switch off the light, would the light say, well let me think, will I turn off the light? Would the light think? If I turn off the light, the light will obey, right? 
Let me tell you, God obeys His commands, His promises. When He said, when you confess a sin, He's faithful and just and forgive you, He will forgive. Will He think, oh, today will I forgive you or not? Will He think? No. He will follow His promises. He's follow His nature. He's follow His nature to love, and at the same time, He has holiness. But Jesus Christ has paid the price. So anytime we confess our sin, have confidence, He for sure will forgive you. Let us say it together. When we are repentant of our sins, and ask Jesus to forgive us, God will for sure forgive us. He will follow His promise. So let us remember that. When we are truly repentant, for sure He will forgive us. And Psalm 51 verse 17, the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart. This, O oh Lord, you will not despise when you are truly repentant. Let me tell you, some people mistake just saying out, Lord, forgive me with repentance. I want to tell the difference. Some people could say, oh, I just lied. Forgive me. And then go on to lie again. Many people do it like this. They, they just say, oh, I have repented. That what they mean, they confess. They have confessed already. But let me tell you, repentance to God is not just confessing my sin. It's saying, I'm sorry. I have offended you. I have sinned against you. It's terrible. Sins are terrible. And it makes God unhappy. So I have to realize that. And I'm sorry for my sins. And I really want to overcome my sins. If you confess your sin and then you think of committing again tomorrow. Like you're angry with your husband or wife. And then you think of continuing being angry with him. Then you're not repentant. You say, Lord, please help me. It's hard. Please help me. How to overcome that anger. Please help me. Now, the motivation to overcome sins. Let's read together. First, God wants to rise, raise us up to a high level. God wants to raise up our life to a high level. Now, you might say, Pastor, you can bless many people, but I cannot. I tell you, no. You can bless many people. If your life is full of Jesus, you can affect many people. People will see a change. So your life can go to a very high level. And one day in heaven, you could have a large crowd behind you and God says, all these people have been brought to heaven by you. Each one of you can be like that if you follow God. And that's next, our life is precious. Your life is very precious. You can do great things for God and you can enjoy life. And third, if we sin, we will destroy God's plan for our lives. Sin will destroy your plan, the plan of God. And then four, if we sin, we could destroy what we do for God. So if you are serving God, it's like building on the foundation of Jesus. And then you build on the foundation, at the same time you are proud, or you fight against other people, you fight against the leaders, what you're doing, you're building up and you're tearing down. Have you seen a person build a house like this? He built and then tear down, build and tear down. Have you seen someone like that? No, but many people build the spiritual life like that. Now, Pastor gave me an illustration. You know, it's terrible. He said, one pastor gave some money to a member and said, if I throw my coat at you and then you fall down, pretend to fall down to show the anointing of the Holy Spirit, I'll give you some money. When I heard that, I said, that's terrible. That's terrible. Are they serving God or are they serving the people to please the people? When God sees that, how would God feel? God sees everything. God sees everything. I've seen people pray for people and they push. There's no point. The most important thing is that they experience the love, the joy, the healing, the freedom of Jesus. It's not for them to fall down. If they fall down, it's great. If they don't fall down, it's okay. So we don't look for showmanship to show people. Now, let's look at these four points. Do you treasure your life? Do you treasure your life? Is your life important? Do you want sin to destroy your life? And you can go higher and higher. So I hope that you 
follow the pastor and say, yes, pastor, what can I do to serve God? What can I do to handle my sins? How can I go higher and higher? I hope you all go that direction. Don't say, oh, only pastors can do it. You can do it too. You might do different things, but everyone can do what God wants you to do. If we sin while serving God, what will happen? Let's read. We cannot escape God's eyes. God can take away our blessings and rewards. And God can do things against us. And what we do for God would be in vain. Do you want to serve God like that? You know, many people serve God in vain. They do a lot of things, but they fight. They do a lot of things, but they, at the same time, they commit sin. And there are people who serve God at the same time, they chase after women. So what they're doing, they show people, I'm a great minister, I'm a great, you know, I serve God with power, but at the same time, they sin against God. Does it work that way? No. So I hope you understand, sinning while serving, you are wasting your time. Okay? And then, I want to say this too, we cannot be totally free from sinful thoughts. Because of our sinful nature, sinful thoughts will come, sometimes come. Will sometimes come. For instance, you just worry. Or you feel unhappy. Or you say, oh, it's, life is so difficult. Suddenly thoughts will come to you like that. Let me ask you, do you think sinful thoughts come to me? Do you think sinful thoughts come to me? Yes. yes. I'm no exception. <laughs> no one is exception. Is there anyone here who don't have sinful thoughts? Please raise your hand. Anyone here, you don't have sinful thoughts? Please raise your hand. So no one uh, is free of sinful thought. But the point is, don't blame yourself when you have sinful thoughts. Don't continue to blame yourself. But handle the thoughts right away. That is the key. But some people say, oh, Pastor, I have sinful thoughts again today. I feel so bad. I am a sinner. I am a sinner again. We are all sinners. We all have sinful thoughts. Don't stay on the sin, but handle it. That's the key is to handle it. Now, it's very important to be sensitive to our desire to sin. For instance, dislike someone is also sin. Even if someone is bad, should we dislike them? No. Should we despise them? No, we want to bless them. And anger and forgiveness, desire to tell a lie, lustful thoughts, steal God's glory, all these are sins. And we want to handle the desire immediately. And the five steps to victory. This is the Holy Spirit's way. I just copy, got the copyright from the Holy Spirit. And it's free to you. You can use it. It's God's way of help, helping us. You look at it and you will be aware. This is how the Holy Spirit helps us. Let us read the five yellow words there. Aware, destructive, biblical concepts, pray, choose. Okay, so very important. Be aware of the sinful thoughts. And then know that it's destructive. And then apply biblical principles. So what does the Bible say I should do? And then pray and then choose to submit. So that's the key. For instance, now many men say it's so hard to overcome lust. When you have lust, when you see a sexy woman, immediately you say it's destructive. And then apply biblical principle. God wants us to be holy and not to have lustful thoughts toward a woman. And then you pray to have strength. And then you choose not to look at a woman or not to think lustful thoughts. Anytime you want, you know, you don't want to forgive, you be able come aware of that, immediately you say, this is destructive. Now many people have problem overcoming sins because they, they say, that's not so bad, everyone is doing that. They look at other Christians, they're looking at the girls too. <laughs> and they say, it's not so bad. The key is many people don't think it's destructive. So I hope you remember, say, sins are destructive. Sins will destroy my life. So you believe it's destructive and then you apply the biblical principle of what to do and then pray and choose to obey. And then you, to simplify, you can have one, four, five. One is become aware and then you pray and you choose to obey. Now that's it. That's the key. Now, why did I say this is from the Holy Spirit? Have you noticed that the Holy Spirit will let us first aware, become aware of our sins? And then we say this is bad. 
this is wrong, it's destructive. And then the Bible tells us what to do. And then you pray, oh, please help me, forgive me. And then you say, okay, now many Christians don't obey God right away. They wait for a long time, sometimes years. Some husband and wife cannot forgive the spouse for decades or for the whole lifetime. They cannot forgive. But if you listen to God and choose, Yes, even though he has problems, I choose to forgive. Can you say that? Say it together. Even when my family members have sins, even when they yell at me, it is their problem. I choose to forgive. I choose to bless them. Can we do that? Now, if we don't do that, what happens is your life is full of bitterness, full of problems and then you cannot go any higher. Now, let me ask you, at this moment, can you say, yes, I forgive my family members? Can you say that? Can you? Yes, I want to forgive my family members. I don't want it to destroy my life. Now, if you can choose to do it now, can you choose to do it tomorrow? And a day after tomorrow? You know, if we choose to do it, we can do it. The reason why very often we don't want to overcome sin is because we don't choose to do it. We choose to stay in the frustration, the anger, the negative feelings. Do you want to stay in the negative feelings? It doesn't help. It doesn't help. And then it's very important to understand that when people sin, when people offend us, actually they have been hurt by other people. They have been hurt by people many times and they cannot handle it. And that's why these people have a lot of frustration. So when I understand that, then I can have compassion on them and want to bless them and want to forgive them. The key to forgiveness is compassion. Say it with me. The key to forgiveness is compassion on people. When I understand they've been hurt many times, say it with me. When I understand they have been hurt many times and they could not handle the hurt experience hurtful experiences and so they continue to hurt people their life is difficult so i have compassion on them and bless them and forgive them now this is very simple but it takes time to apply it i hope you start to do it i hope you start to do it and Take care of different sins with the, uh, your son. Uh, come to play the keyboard. I will lead you in a prayer right now. Please close your eyes. Oh Lord Jesus, have mercy upon us. We know that sins are destructive, but it's a fact that many of us are controlled by sins. Many of us are controlled by laziness. Even here now, some of us are lazy, cannot concentrate in the Lord. That we don't have the habit of worshiping you and loving you at home when there is no music. We cannot concentrate and love you. And we have allowed negative feelings in our heart to control us. We are letting Satan steal from us. We are letting negative emotions control us. Oh Lord Jesus, we are truly sorry. Unknowingly, our lives are being controlled by Satan and taken away from us. Lord Jesus, I want to come to you with a renewed mind, Lord Jesus, son this morning I'm going to come to you with repentance
frustration, anger, negative feelings, unforgiveness, and laziness, lukewarmness. Lord Jesus, help us. this morning to God. You say, Lord, I want to repent to you. Please help me. Please help me. Search our hearts, Lord. Search our hearts, Lord. We all have fallen short of the glory of God. We all have fallen short of the glory of God. Are we loving God the whole day long? Are we following God the whole day long? When well, we're not doing that, we are sinning. Oh. You want to repent to God and ask God to forgive you this morning, would you stand up to your feet? When you repent of your sins and say, Lord, I have not loved you enough. I have not loved people enough. I have sinned against you. I'm not worthy. I have a dark side in my life. Please wash me clean with the blood of Jesus. Jesus, forgive my sins. Oh, Jesus, I am sorry for my sins. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. 
for your wonderful gift. And I hope you will all understand. The relationship with God is not just about music. Now some people like the music. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. It's not just about good music. It's not just about praising God. Some people praise God might have sins hidden inside. We need to come to God and repent and say, Lord, I'm sorry. I know sins are very destructive. I need to repent and turn away from sins and follow your holiness. The holiness of God is very beautiful. In heaven, there is no more anger. Even people who have been angered to you on earth, in heaven, they will be very happy to see you. In heaven, there is no more anger. Is your family like that? If your family has anger and forgiveness, we need to repent. And God bless you. I encourage you to believe and know that in order to have a good relationship with you. It's not just praise and worship. It's not just music. It's start with repentance and having a close relationship with God and handle all problems in life and follow God faithfully, obey Him in every area of our life. It's not just having a good time praising God, but following God in every way. God bless you all. Hope you remember the words. Hope you remember this and live in the holiness and the love of God. Let's say together, I want to live in the love and the holiness of God. My relationship with God starts with repentance. Trusting in Jesus' forgiveness. Taking care of the problems in my life. And having a close relationship with Him. And obeying Him. And serving Him. And glorifying His name. Hallelujah. God bless you all. Hallelujah. Hope you remember my message. God bless you. It's not just a message. It's your life message. God bless you all. Thank you. Let me know.